So artificial intelligence and automation have been replacing jobs across lots of different career fields. Well, are doctors next? Will you soon be treated by a computer or a machine when you go to the hospital with chest pain or if you have a fracture? In this video today, I'm going to be talking about artificial intelligence and how it may change the future of medicine. What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week, you don't wanna miss them. So, what is artificial intelligence? AI or artificial intelligence is the theory and development of computer systems that can replace human tasks. It's been around for a while. There are lots of different systems in place already. If you think about the self-driving cars or drones, if you think about like Google search engines or even banks have, have been using it since the 80s to track fraudulent charges and this flags a, an investigator to look into those charges. Siri, you know, things that you do on your phone, there's lots of different applications of artificial intelligence. The question is how will artificial intelligence you know, affect the uh, future of medicine, as well as will it replace doctors? Personal data has become a valuable currency in the world today, and it continues to grow exponentially in every part of our lives, including healthcare. Some estimates have medical data doubling every three years, but the reality is systems are not built to easily or effectively leverage the information to help physicians make the best possible patient care decisions. For the first time in history, the application of cognitive computing to healthcare could change that forever. In terms of medicine, China has actually already implemented a system in place to have an artificial intelligence assisted treatment center that's in China where the systems allow the doctors to be more efficient. Say for instance there's a radiologist and a patient comes in with um, signs of pneumonia. That radiologist will take that chest x-ray and read it looking for some signs of consolidation or areas of pneumonia. And it may take that particular radiologist, let's say, I don't know, like 10 minutes or so to read that x-ray and then he has to go on to the next one. So you can see how much time that it will take a, a physician or a radiologist to read, let's say, 100 x-rays. Well, artificial intelligence is basically training the computer to diagnose certain diseases. So they input different x-rays, let's say of a thousand x-rays of pneumonia. So you're basically training the system to pick up on that diagnosis. And if you can have the computer system read a thousand x-rays in like 10 minutes, man, that can save a lot of money and save a lot of time and also can free up the physicians so that they can do other things in their particular busy day. Waiting for a medical diagnosis can often be just as nerve-wracking, if not worse, than waiting in line to see a doctor. Now a hospital in China is using artificial intelligence to deliver speedy results to patients. Our Ren Xuetian has the story. What used to involve repetitive manual sorting through pages of lawn scans can now be done in seconds, as shown here. A team of radiologists at the Beijing Shijitan Hospital has loaded the set of lawn scans into a computer to speed up screening. Through this, they can now speed up diagnosis and detect the early signs of lung cancer faster than before. My departments of 30 people see over 700 patients every day. This new software, Peerbox, can probably do that in hours. It automates repetitive work that might have otherwise taken me longer to sort through. All I need to do is examine the scans for false positives. This gives me more time to attend to other patients and do research. There's also a big problem in the, in the healthcare uh, field today, and that is human error. And we go through a lot of different years of training. We spend a number of hours studying, practicing different procedures, reading books, uh, researching articles. But at the end of the day, humans are human. They make mistakes. 
And one aspect of artificial intelligence for the proponents of it is that it can possibly uh, reduce human error. There are some downsides of whether or not the computer can have a glitch in it or the computer can make mistakes, but if we can somehow train the computers or the systems in place to reduce medical errors, that can potentially save a lot of people's lives. There was a study in 2016 out in Johns Hopkins University where they found that uh, medical errors are the third leading cause of death. They quoted over 250,000 deaths per year, and that number is quite debatable. But at the end of the day, overwhelming message is that there are a lot of human errors that are made. And this is maybe possibly that doctors are working too many hours and they make mistakes, they're not trained well enough, and lots of different other reasons why uh, these errors are being made. So Microsoft has also utilized AI in cancer treatment. Came up with a project called Hanover. And this uh, project, the goal of it was to minimize the time spent trying to decide which patient should get which cancer medication. Using technology to personalize cancer treatment. Cancer experts will sometimes tell you that every patient's cancer is a snowflake each case unique in its own way. That's one of the many things that makes treating cancer so difficult. Oncologists need to consider the individual elements of each patient's cancer, which is to say the individual parts of their DNA, to figure out the best way to treat it. Understanding genomics enables us to get at the root cause of the cancer, but it also results in a large number of molecular subtypes that must be considered. With the most difficult cancer cases, oncologists will convene on a molecular tumor board when a group of doctors get together to discuss a case and provide their expert opinions on the best course of action. Hoi Fung Poon wants more cancer patients to have that kind of treatment. Along with colleagues, he's developed a system that uses machine learning to sort through the massive volume of cancer research to figure out most relevant academic papers and research developments that might apply to a particular case. The system could augment oncologists' work by allowing them to more quickly cull through data and create personalized cancer treatment plans that can more effectively treat each unique cancer. There are lots of different medications out there for cancer. Every time you look around, there's a new medication that's on the market, but they're trying to train the system so that it will memorize all the papers out there, all the information about all the different articles, about the different medications, so it can match it up with the correct patient and that particular cancer type. So they're working on that project, and I think that's a really good idea. In surgery, robotic assisted surgery has been around for a while. General surgeons use uh, robotic surgery for different procedures, for really complex and really precision and accuracy in surgery. They use these uh, robots. So one particular one is the Da Vinci. This system allows the uh, surgeon to do a procedure where back in the day they used to use large incisions. Now the incisions can be a lot smaller, the patients can get home sooner and have less pain after surgery. The surgeon can also be across the room and do the surgery on the patient using the robots, using the manuals, the controls to perform the surgery from across the room. Robotic surgery provides pinpoint accuracy. Advances in the field range from the development of more accurate planning tools and software to increased automation of tasks during surgery. Robotization is also reaching endovascular procedures like percutaneous coronary intervention, PCI, and peripheral vascular intervention, PVI, which traditionally require the surgeon to wear lead. Using robotics now lowers risk for patients and the surgeon while improving outcomes. Robotic surgery provides precision, flexibility, and control Paired with shortened recovery time and limited pain. In orthopedics, uh, we use computer navigation. So a computer inside of surgery where we're doing a hip replacement or a knee replacement, we can utilize this computer to tell us where we should make our bone cuts, how much of the ligaments should be released, ultimately trying to give the patient a better knee replacement, get them out of the hospital quicker and less pain. 
And spine surgery, robotic surgery is very common these days. It's becoming more popular. This allows us to put in screws into the parts of the spine that, it, that is within millimeters from the spinal cord, it's allowing for precision and accuracy, especially in a very complex type surgery like spine surgery. We have a force sensing indicator to let us know that we're skiving or moving off that trajectory. Um, two, we have the ability to click this in a direction to face that line of sight tracking so we don't have line of sight issues with yeah. that navigation. And then we can also one hand this instrumentation because it's being held on trajectory. So, do I think that artificial intelligence will replace doctors? No, I don't think so, but I do think it will be a compliment. There are lots of different things that AI or artificial intelligence cannot replace that doctors have, such as empathy, communication, bedside manners, and those things. Uh, but I do think possibly it can prevent bias, um, implicit bias. Uh, there's a lot of that in medicine where a physician makes a decision based off of his own perceptions of that patient, etc. So what do you guys think? Will AI be the future of medicine? Will it eventually replace doctors? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.